of difficulty with our computer. It, uh, it crashed. You, you know it was happening a couple weeks ago, and it crashed this past week. And uh, so uh, if, any, if there's any glitches, it's not anybody's fault, okay? It's just uh, our computer is fried. Uh, Brother Jonathan is trying to work on it and pray that we can get it fixed because that's the kind of computer that we need to run, everything we need to run up there. We have things sort of sort of worked out today. So if there's any glitches, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way it is. So but we're glad that you're here, especially on this really stormy Sunday morning, huh? But uh, <clears throat> I say, I tell people, it doesn't matter what the weather's like, uh, people just don't come. If it's sunny, they don't come. If it's storming, they don't come. If it's snowy, they don't come. If it's windy, they don't come. <laughs> and that's okay. You guys are here. You guys are here. So, <clears throat> and I love this because this song that we're starting with is a new song, and it simply says, come what may. And so whether it's stormy or whether it's snowy or whether it's windy or whether it's sunny or whether it's, 100 degrees or 10 degrees? Come what may. We're going to trust God, right? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's begin our worship time this morning. Sometimes sorrow is the door to peace. Sometimes heartache is the gift I need. You're faithful, faithful in all things. In every high, in every low, on mountains, tops, down broken roads, you're still my rock, my hope remains. I rest in the arms of Jesus, come what may. That's right, come what may.
The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and to release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes and the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us here in this service. Lord, I pray that you continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Throughout the rest of this service, Lord, be with Pastor Joe as he delivers the message to your people, Lord. And I lift all this up to you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Everywhere we look in Nazarene missions, we are seeing a movement of the Holy Spirit to bring salvation and restoration through the people of God. We believe that through faith, God will continue to do amazing things. See, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Faith is a choice, and His promise is clear. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So how do we step out in faith? How do we connect with God's promise? How do we join His movement? Every church of the Nazarene is encouraged to share a percentage of their income to Nazarene missions. These funds are essential to spread the gospel and to support our missionaries. Many churches step out in faith beyond this encouraged percentage through Faith Promise. This one weekend each year emphasizes the missional work of the local congregation and the global church. They are challenged to give generously to share Christ's transformational love with the world. But this isn't a calculated pledge. It's a promise made by faith that God will provide. A promise that He will do immeasurably more than we could ever imagine. Faith promise is about stepping out in faith. It's about the giving of our resources so that the good news can be shared. God will answer our prayers of hope and fulfill His promise. God is moving through His people around the world and through faith promise. Nazarene Missions invites you to join the movement. Man, well, this is, and uh, team, you can be seated for just a few minutes. I have a, pre, if you just want to just kind of go to your seats. <laughs> we want to welcome you to our Faith Promise Sunday. And uh, we, th- this, this is one of those things that we used to do like a uh, whole weekend. We had like a Friday night service with a missionary and a dinner Saturday and, and then a big thing on Sunday. But Well, you know, times have changed, right? So now we have like one service to actually encourage you to give to missions. And I just want to thank you uh, for your faithfulness in giving. Well, it was over $9,000, probably close to about $9,800, almost $10,000 last year you gave to World Missions. And we just want to thank you so much for your faithfulness. It helps us to be a 10% church. That means that we tithe our income to missions. And I really do believe that God blesses us when we do that. And so we have, I have a few slides that I would like to um, share with you this morning. Because people may say, what is, what is faith promise? What, what is this all about? Well, it is simply that. Next slide, please. What, what is faith promise? Well, the Church of the Nazarene acknowledges that faith promise giving is a biblical method used by many local churches for raising financial support for world evangelism. So in other words, when we go out and we spread the gospel, we call that to evangelize. And so when we do that, we, we are able then to provide missionaries and other resources to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus around the world. It is a promise by faith that God will enable you to give financially to support world evangelism through our missions arm of the church, Nazarene Missions International. And so now we have Nazarene Missions International, Nazarene Youth International, and now we have Nazarene Discipleship International. So they all say it that way now. So that is what basically faith promise is. What faith promise is not, it is not your tithe. 
Some people choose, okay, I have so much to give, then I'm going to take what I get, used to give in tithe and give to faith, promise, to missions. We ask you not to do that. Your tithe is your tithe. A faith promise is a love offering. It's a love offering to God, a gift to God to be given beyond your tithe. If you're not able to give, that's perfectly fine. We, we understand that if you're not able to give. So we do not ask you to take your tithe away from your giving locally of the church to give to faith promise. It is not a substitute for missions offerings. In addition to faith promise, you also have given other opportunities to give throughout the year, such as Alabaster and World Mission Radio and Child Sponsorship and all of those. That's in addition as well. If you're not able to give to those offerings, that's fine. Don't feel obligated to do so. And faith promise is not a cure-all for the church's financial problems. Faith promise giving is earmarked specifically for world evangelism. <clears throat> you have to excuse me. I don't have much of a voice today with my allergies, <clears throat> especially when the lilacs are in bloom. Every year the lilacs wreak havoc with my allergies. So that is what faith promise is not, okay? In other words, we don't take faith promise and use it to pay our electric bill. Okay, faith promises us directly to world evangelism. Next slide, please. So what does my giving to faith promise do? The main priority of faith promise giving is reaching the world for Christ through the payment of the World Evangelism Fund, <coughs> or WEF, W-E-F, World Evangelism Fund. The World Evangelism Fund provides salaries, medical coverages, housing, and other living expenses for 700 missionaries and their families. We have 700 missionaries around the world that spread the good news. Aren't we thankful for those 700 missionaries and their families? And they are living and they're working in 162 countries around the globe. Now these statistics are a little older. 2016 World Evangelism Giving was $40 million given by Nazarenes worldwide. When you consider the the, the membership of the Church of the Nazarene around the globe is only about two and a half million people. So two and a half million people around the globe gave $40 million to World Evangelism. And that's amazing, isn't it? Our church raises, on average, around $10,000, our local church here, about $10,000 a year for World Evangelism. And we so appreciate it. Throughout the year, there are also opportunities to give to other missions needs for buying land and buildings, as in giving to Alabaster Offering, Nazarene Radio Broadcasting, humanitarian aid, and responding to national disasters, and, of course, many others. So next slide. That is, in a nutshell, what Faith Promise is. And each year, you see these cards. And you're going to see them. Next slide, please. And on this side of the card, you say, my faith promise pledge. By faith, I promise to give a total of blank dollars to world evangelism this year and put your name. And I usually have one to people that don't put their names on it because they don't want me to know. That's fine. I don't need to know. God knows, right? So what we are concerned about is the total offering. You can give this weekly. You can give it monthly. You can give it in a lump sum. We don't care how you give it, but we do ask that if you promise, as you are able to, if you're able to, to give that amount that you've pledged to. And on the back side, you'll see, again, a little blurb about what I just shared with you. So if I can actually have, we need, I need several people today to help me. Could I have our ushers come, first of all? And then, uh, Brother Daryl, you did such a great job last week at the annual meeting. Yes, Daryl, I'm talking to you. Could you pass these cards out? I'm going to give these to Daryl and give these to everyone. I have something else for the uh, ushers to give. Thank you. Do we have another usher by any chance? Yes, we do. And who is that other usher? Paul. Oh, Paul is not here. Uh, John, would you help me, John, please? All right. So here we have a brochure. I uh, give that to you, Carol. This explains faith promise more fully. And then, this is the big handout you get. This looks like the, the handout you got last week, right? We're just giving you all kinds of stuff to read. 
And everyone gets each, everyone gets one of these. And this explains uh, faith promise. And then this is a packet that gives you all kinds of, go ahead and pass them out. Uh, this gives you all kinds of information about fast facts from Nazarene Missions International, all kinds of things about strategies, how we perform our missions activities around the globe. You're going to want to read this. This is going to be great reading for you. This is not to keep you busy or to put you to sleep. Because I know some of you read this stuff and go to sleep, right? Well, I ask you not to read it and go to sleep, but this is very, very important stuff. And this will help you to see the different avenues that we in the Church of the Nazarene are able to use to proclaim the good news of the salvation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you to read this, have a better understanding of what world evangelism is through the Church of the Nazarene. I will ask you at the end of the service, at the end of the service, to return your pledge cards at the last song and place them on the altar as a promise to God that you will do everything you can to fulfill that promise this coming year. You did a great job last year. Again, again, close to $10,000. Thank you so much. I'm hoping for at least that much this year. I know that our numbers are down from where they were last year. We have lost several people in our fellowship. And we may not receive as much, but we're, I'm hoping for at least that same amount. You could put those, uh, put those right over here, John. Thank you. Thank you. I'll have these out there if you would like uh, to hand them to anyone else. And if you did not receive last week's annual report, there are more out there, a few out there that are left. These are all the reports from all the ministries here at, the, at our church, and the first page gives you the breakdown financially of what we gave, and there's highlighted the missions giving as well. Thank you so much for your help. And now, we would like to spend the rest of our service, thank you so much, right here, Carol, thank you. We'd like to spend the rest of our service singing some really, really good missions hymns today. And I think you're going to be blessed by what they say. We ask the praise team to come back up. And each and every one of these songs and the sermon this morning is really about, thank you, Daryl, appreciate it. And I want to encourage you to really be praying and asking God to speak to your heart today about what you may be able to give. We can't always go everywhere, but there are those that can and are willing to go. And your giving makes that possible. Thank you so much. A beautiful hymn, and we used to sing this all the time, is Tell the Blessed Story of the Cross. Let's stand together and let's, let's really hear what these songs are saying about spreading and sharing the good news around the globe. Church of God, awaken ye the Lord's command. Tell the blessed story of the cross. Blessed story of the hallowed cross until every nation learns of full salvation. Tell the blessed story of the cross. Has he not commissioned you the news to bear? Tell the blessed story of the cross. Go ye into all the world and everywhere. Tell the blessed story of the cross. Tell the blessed story of the cross of Jesus. Tell the blessed story of the hallowed cross. Until every nation learns of full salvation. Tell the blessed story of the cross. Stand no longer idle while the moments fly. Tell the blessed story of the cross. Multitudes in heathen darkness live and die. Tell the blessed story Story of the cross until 
I love that song where it says, you know, this, this our song of victory, it is a song of victory, isn't it? That Jesus saves today. And there is victory over the tomb because Jesus saves. He died. He was buried, but he was resurrected for you and for me. And he ascends on high today and he intercedes and ever intercedes for you and me. He's praying for us right now. We praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to invite our stewards and pastors to come and help us as we prepare our hearts for receiving of the Lord's Supper here this morning. I'm going to invite our AV team to come down and join us, please. It'll make it a little easier for our stewards and pastors today. Aren't you glad that Jesus saves? And we need to shout that, not just abroad. We need to shout it here. We, we I, I was telling something, you know, I, I, when we used to think about heathen lands, we used to think about lands outside of America. But let me tell you, America is just as much a heathen land as any other nation is on planet Earth. And we are, we are as much pagan as, as any other nation on planet Earth is. And like I tell people, there's enough pagans around the globe <laughs> right here in our own America. Pagan, a pagan is someone who does not know Jesus Christ. And we need to tell the good news that Jesus saves. And aren't you glad today that you are sitting here today because you heard the good news. Someone told you that Jesus loved you and died for you and that he gave up himself for you for your salvation to save you from your sins. Aren't you glad today? for that. The Lord's Supper communion, the Holy Eucharist is available to all in the Church of Nazarene who openly confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You don't have to be a member of this local church, but you do have to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, part of His body. You have needed to confess your sins, turn from your wicked ways and following Him in a life of obedience to Him. And if you've done that, you can freely, wonderfully partake of these elements of his broken body and his shed blood. I want to read to you a poem. I thank you for your faithfulness to keep me from all harm. I will ever hide securely in your everlasting arm. The men and things attack me, your word will stay the same. All evil will diminish through your spoken holy name. How could I e'er forget your gift upon the tree? How did you die for, I'm sorry, you died for the worst of sinners, seems none so low as me. And now I thank you, Lord, for everything you give. And though I don't deserve it, you died so I could live. Amen. Well, my daughter wrote that. in 1992. And I'm so thankful for that. When I think about that 30, 30 years ago, I mean, you know, this is what this is about, guys. This kind of legacy. You know, this is, this is for you and your family, for your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. I was going through some boxes, and they, they, they said, oh, just throw them out. Well, I can't do that. I, I've got to go through every page and everything in the box, you know. And I ran across this yesterday. And I'm so thankful for a daughter who loves Jesus Amen. and serves Jesus and is raising her children to love Jesus. And I'm going to give you this back. I took a picture. <laughs> but God is so good, isn't he? Tell the blessed story, and the first people you better tell the blessed story to is your children. <laughs> you tell them about Jesus. Tell them about Jesus, right? Right? And don't give up on your family either. They were all here a couple weeks back at Revival. Don't you give up on that family. <laughs> don't you give up on your family, guys.
Jesus loves them. He wants them to be here with you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Don't you give up on them. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your love for us. How good you are. How undeserving, just like Dusty said, I'm just the worst of them, worst of sinners. I'm undeserving, but you loved me so. How could we ever repay that kind of debt? Help us to live lives of obedience to you, faithfully serving you. And as I pray every day, oh God, that my children and grandchildren will love you and serve you all the days of their lives. And I pray that these children here in this church that you've given to me, this flock, I pray that they will love you and serve you all the days of their lives as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it's good to have our new steward helping us today, Brother Jonathan. Jesus, thy boundless love to me, no thought can reach, no tongue declare. I'll knit my thankful heart to thee and reign without a rival there. Thine holy Thine alone I am, be thou my constant flame. O oh, grant that nothing in my soul may dwell but thy pure love alone. O oh, may thy love possess me whole. My joy, my treasure, and my crown, all coldness from my heart remove. My every act, word, thought, be love. O oh, love, how gracious is thy ray. All fear before thy presence flies. Care, anguish, sorrow melt away. Wherever thy healing beams arise, O oh, Jesus, nothing may I see, nothing desire or seek but thee. In suffering be thy love my peace. In weakness be my love, my power. And when the storms of life shall cease, Jesus, in that important hour, in death as life, be thou my guide and save me who for me has died. We live our whole lives walking in that love, and one of these days, that love will carry us into his presence. To know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3.19. Are you not thankful for that love divine, that love so gracious, that love so wonderful, that reached down to where you were, Lifted you up out of the pit that you were in. I don't know about the pit you were in, but I know the pit I was in. And Jesus lifted me out of that pit, and he set my feet on a solid rock. And that rock is called Jesus today. Are your feet on the solid rock? All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We thank you for your love today, and we worship you, and we praise you, and we give you glory, Jesus. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. Jesus, your boundless love to me, I cannot tell. My tongue could never tell. My life, if I had a thousand lifetimes to live, they would not be enough in payment for what you did for me. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ which is broken for you, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Take eat and be thankful, for it is by his stripes you are healed today. Receive his healing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. More about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see. 
more of his love who died for me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Last week I preached a message about wanting more of God and the more of God and the more of God is for you today. More about Jesus let me learn. More of his holy will discern. Spirit of God my teacher be showing the things of Christ to me. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus in his word, holding communion with my Lord, hearing his voice in every line, making each faithful saying mine. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. More about Jesus on his throne, hallelujah. Riches and glory all his own. More of his kingdom sure increase. More of his coming, our prince of peace. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. Do you want to know more of his love for you? Do you want to know more of his fullness, more of his grace and power that's available to you, more of all his riches? I encourage you, grow in the knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let him fill you to overflowing. Our cup overflows with the goodness of our God. And we praise him and give him glory today. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your blood today. Because the blood of Jesus is all powerful. All powerful. Oh, the wonder-working power of the blood of Jesus to reach down and redeem one such as I. We thank you for your love today. We thank you for your blood today. We thank you for your grace today. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was poured out for you for the remission of your sins, take drink and be eternally thankful. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise and glory. It is all, all about Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, pastors and stewards. Amen. Aren't you thankful today for Jesus and his sacrifice for us? As we move into now our prayer time, I want to encourage you to be praying for our government. We are praying through the seven areas of influence. This, we're taking a different influence each month. And this month is government. And uh, that's right, thank you. This month is government, I thought how appropriate because this Thursday is National Day of Prayer for our nation. And so I want to encourage you to be praying for each and every one of these seven areas of influence. They are listed here for you. We have already prayed for the church and the family, and now this month we're asking you to pray in particular for our government. And you'll see the breakdown for each one of the, these in scriptures. We had previously uh, would meet on Thursday for prayer but we will actually be just having our regular Wednesday service, okay, this week. Uh, but we'll spend some time particularly praying uh, about each and every one of these areas. 
So take this, put this by your bed or your quiet time place, wherever that is. I encourage you to be praying for each and every one of these centers of influence in our nation. And if we've ever, if we've ever needed to be praying for our government, it is today. Because things are in such a mess, not just here, but globally. And whether you understand it or not, America is still the greatest nation on planet Earth. And America is the nation that is the leader of the free world. We are still the leader of the free world. And we have got to, we've got to be doing a better job than we're doing right now. So let's be praying for our government. And if they've ever needed our prayers, it is today. So we must be praying. So I encourage you to do that. We're also praying this week for Trinidad and Tobago in our world mission area. So I encourage you to be lifting that area up to the Lord in prayer. Also, Satching Pittsburgh with prayer is there as well. And I want to encourage you that if you are at all interested in doing street ministry, there's going to be a special street ministry that we need to be praying into, and that is, uh, I saw it here, Church Without Walls. And if you want any information, this is not our street ministry that we do here under Denise's leadership. This is a different ministry. If you have any questions, please see uh, Sister Alyssa over there, and she will be giving information, and that will be on Thursday night, this coming third or Tuesday night, Tuesday night. And the street ministry that's in here is not going to be taking place. It's the next week, correct? Yes. So we want to also give God praise for the things that uh, you see listed there in your bulletin. Uh, God is doing all kinds of things, answering all kinds of prayers. And we just want to thank you that you are a praying people. And I want to thank you and I want to thank God for you because God is answering prayers. And God is in the business of hearing what we're praying. And let me tell you, the answer is already on the way. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful hymn that we're going to be singing. Wonderful words of life. And to whom shall we go? The disciples said to Jesus, you have the words of eternal life. I would encourage you to stand with us here this morning. As we sing these words, maybe you might want to come and gather around the altar. If you want to be anointed for any reason, feel free to come and sit at the front pew and just ask the Lord to touch you this morning. me 
you are life. Thank you that your word is alive and active in our lives, dear God. Lord, today I think of our government. Oh, Lord, I pray that you speak truth to them where there are lies. Lord, I pray that you raise up a government under you and under your direction That's right. and what you want for the United States of America and not anybody else's narrative. Oh, Lord, we need your help, Lord. I'm asking the people that are not serving you or in standing up for truth and what is right that you remove them from their position, place, and power and replace them with godly men, godly women, Oh, Lord, that are going to stand. We need people that are going to stand for you, Jesus. So, Lord, I am praying for peace in the government. I'm praying for unity yes. of truth yes. and power and justice for all of us. They all took an oath to defend this country and to stand up for what is right. It's not about their beliefs. It is about what this country was founded on, and that is your Christian principles. So we thank you, Lord God. So I, I speak to our government. I speak truth. I speak peace. Lord, I speak salvation for the lost ones that, that need salvation. I pray for their souls, God. And Lord, we think of spreading the good news you commissioned all of us to spread the good news the com the great commission and lord so i think of all the missionaries lord across this world yes. and across the united states across uh the whole map lord god and i just ask that you are with them that you protect them as they deliver the good news to your people i thank you lord yes. lord today i pray lord that your holy spirit falls upon us lord that you activate uh the Holy Spirit in here, Lord, it is in us. You are in us and you are on us. And I thank you for the kingdom. I thank you, Lord God, the kingdom that lives within us. And that is you, Lord, that is you. And Lord, so rise up in us, oh God. I pray, Lord, that you pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, and that it spreads like wildfires, Lord, everywhere. So send the rain as we were crying out today on Sanctified Sisters before we even got to church. But Lord, send the rain, Lord, send the rain. Set us on fire, set revival in our hearts, in this church, and it only takes one, and it only takes one, God. So Lord, let it be us, God. Speak to our hearts, God. May we make a stand for you. And Lord, I pray for each and every person in here, physically, spiritually, emotionally, that you heal their bodies, Lord. And I think of their needs. I think of Hazel, Lord. You've done such a great thing in Hazel. You, you have healed her. And I'm asking for a complete uh, accelerated healing in her legs, Lord, to help her walk. And Lord, I can't wait to see her smiling face back in this yes, church because I know it's going to happen. Yes. So we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for Hazel, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, uh, for e if anybody needs a touch here this morning, I ask you to come forward and receive it because the Lord is present to heal. So, Lord, we thank you and I praise you. And I lift all these things up to you today in Jesus' holy name. Amen. If anybody wants to be anointed, please come forward um, and may the staff come forward to um, anoint them, please.
He is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. He
Hebrews 7.25. Amen, amen. Would the ushers please come forward for the tithes and offerings? Amen. that uh, missions course they're all over the world right from the scripture that the spirit of the lord is moving as the waters cover the sea right here in this place and deep down in my heart the spirit of the lord is moving well just a couple of announcements i think i've mentioned most of them already uh, i saw that sanctified sisters is meeting this week correct and uh but again that street ministry on saturday is not happening that's going to be next saturday and then this week on Tuesday is the street ministry that you might be interested in, uh, Church Without Walls. And then just one other thing I want to mention to you. Yes, my friends, it is that time for the air conditioner to come on in this church. And I know last week uh, we, I had a lot of griping uh, about it. Uh, it was 83 degrees last, Wednesday, or last Sunday, I believe it was. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I have the thermostat set on 72 which is really not that cold, okay? Um, but the problem is the way this church, being over 125 years old, the ventilation system is a little different. So all of the air duct work for air conditioning comes right along the side walls there. So the 11th commandment is thou shalt not turn off that vent, thou shalt not put a book on that vent, thou shalt not put the hymnal on that vent, because the pastor does walk around and see who is sitting where and what vents are closed or covered. If you are too cold over there, there's plenty of room over here, and that whole overflow is open. Uh, I would like one of these days to see it filled again like it used to be filled. Uh, that would be really wonderful. But there's no air conditioning over there because that is controlled by the downstairs furnace. Okay? So if you're really, really, really cold over here or even about there maybe, well, if some of you want to move over there, there's actually no air conditioning over there because that doesn't ever come on because it's too cool down the basement we don't really need it down there much unless we get like 50 or 60 people down there so uh again uh where have your coat i see you know you brought your coat nikki you know bring bring your coat uh loretta had her gloves on last week and uh so she had her gloves on in church well that's okay loretta you can wear your no there's no rule saying that you don't you can't wear gloves in church so you can wear yeah you can wear a hat in church you, you, you earmuffs, scarf. I mean, you know, I don't really care, you know. Uh, but the thing of it is, 
Think of it is, if I turn that off, then what I'm going to hear is griping about how hot it is in here. Okay, and so you see, there's never any in between, right? So, just so, yes, it is air conditioner time, and I don't keep it real cold. I don't think 72 is actually really not that cold when you think about air conditioning, and especially when you consider that it's probably about at least 10 degrees hotter here and about 20 degrees hotter up there, and it's really hot up there, okay? So, uh, I think that's the major announcements I wanted to make about that. Because I know that, uh, as, you know, when you get older too, right, you know, your, 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 your skin thins out and your blood thins and, you know, and so, you know, so don't wear your strapless things, ladies, you know, I mean, what can I say, you know, sweaters, parkas, I don't know, whatever. But some of you like it cold. And Miss Carol back there, it could be 68 degrees in this sanctuary, and she would love it. So, all right. If you would turn to First Chronicles, First Chronicles, and you're probably thinking to yourself, what in the world does First Chronicles have to do with world evangelism? I think you're going to find out very quickly. King David has been able now to secure an area in Jerusalem and brings into the midst of Jerusalem uh, the tent of meeting or the tabernacle and a place for the Ark of the Covenant to sit. And worship begins earnestly in Jerusalem. And uh, they have a, it, it's a wonderful day. And, the, and there, there's, there's lots of music and lots of dancing and lots of, you know, all that stuff. And he really centers Jerusalem as, as, as the center of worship for the people of Israel. And he hands to the leaders uh, in, the, in the sanctuary, uh, in the tabernacle, those that would be uh, over the worship. And th there were individuals who were, were, uh, that were, you know, played instruments and sang and, and blew trumpets and so forth, you know. And so if you would take a look at the beginning of verse 7, uh, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 7, this is a psalm, and, and, this, and this psalm is repeated, uh, Psalm 38, um, in, uh, later on in Psalms. But we have it here in its entirety. I want to read it because it is a beautiful, powerful psalm. But then I want to pull out, if you will, uh, verses 23 and 24 when we get there. On that day, David first delivered this psalm. Into, that is the day that the ark came into Jerusalem. The tabernacle set up there in the midst of the capital into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. That is those who were leading the worship to thank the Lord. And, he's, and this is the psalm, verse 8. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. And that's not, that's not just that's not the Israelite people. That is the people of the planet. All peoples of the earth sing to him, sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Hallelujah. Seek his face. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth, not just in Jerusalem, but in all the earth. Remember his covenant forevermore, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance. When when you were but few in number, indeed, very few and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no man to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Then, verse 23 and 24, Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. How many people? All the earth. Declare his glory among the nations. Just one nation? All nations. His wonders among all peoples, just a few peoples? 
but all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods and the peoples are idols. But the Lord, that is Yahweh, made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord glory due his name. Come on, give him glory. Bring an honor, an offering, and come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad, and let them say among the nations, one nation, all the nations, what do they need to say? The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Let the sea roar and all its fullness. Let the field rejoice and all that is in it. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Get ready. Jesus is coming again, and he's coming to judge this old planet. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And save and say, save us, O oh God, our salvation. Hosanna, Hosanna. Gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. What a powerful, powerful scripture about the glory of the Lord and proclaiming his goodness and his rule across all this planet of ours from the ravaged land of Thailand to the deserts of Africa, we declare his glory, amen? From the rugged Andes mountains of South America to the frozen lands of Canada, we declare his glory. From the sunny islands of the Pacific, where some of you want to be right now, to the icy cold shores of Iceland, we declare his glory. Amen? Amen. From sea to shining sea on this nation of ours, we declare his glory. From the urban chaos to the remote villages, we declare his glory. Amen? That is what this psalm is all about. My friends, first of all, we are called to proclaim the good news. As the people of God, we are called to proclaim the good news of his salvation every day and everywhere. We must realize that the mission is ours, not just for a few missionaries that we send, but the missionary work is ours as well. We are all missionaries for the Lord, are we not? In every sphere of our lives, we must let the light of Jesus shine through us so that others will see the glory of the Lord and be drawn to him and the salvation that he offers to them. In the places that we are not able to go, what do we do? We send. We send missionaries to go for us who will be faithful in spreading the good news to every land. And what do they need? They need our prayers but they also need our financial support. That is why, my friends, each and every year we do our faith promise pledging so that we can send missionaries and those that work in foreign lands where we cannot go, we are able to send them. We stand with them in the sharing of the good news to all the earth. And when we are faithful to proclaim and the peoples of this world are one to the whole earth, then the scripture here says that the whole earth will sing to the Lord, the God of all creation. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. And don't you want to hear that across this whole planet? If we've ever need to hear that, it is today that the Lord reigns across this planet called earth. If you have not gotten a book, I encourage my Bible study group on Tuesday morning to get a, it's, it's a church history devotional book, church history devotional book. And each, each day you read a, a story about an individual throughout Bible times or, or throughout the history of the church, uh, most of them who gave up their very lives. Last night I read uh, two missionary ladies who, who were killed in Thailand back in the day in 1974. They were martyred, shot to death. Uh, because they had been spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. 
Let me tell you, there are people that give up their lives every single day for the cause of Christ. I encourage you to get that book and read it. It's so very, very powerful. The second thing we're called to do is to indeed declare his glory. His glory is his presence. His presence is his glory. It's the same word. Glory and presence is the same word in the Old Testament. When God showed up, his glory showed up. When Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and his glory filled the temple, it was his presence. That is the same thing. His glory is his presence. The glory of the Lord is the fact that he chooses. Think about this, that God... <clears throat> that God chooses to manifest himself to his lost and dying world. Isn't it amazing that God always takes the initiative and he reveals himself to us? Isn't that amazing to you that God does that? That God chooses to reveal himself? The God of all creation says, hey, Rick, I see you. Isn't that amazing that God sees Rick? Isn't that amazing? It's amazing to me that God, all oh, the infinite God that he is, looks down and he sees me. <laughs> Who am I? Who am I that God should even consider me? Amazing. We live, we need to live, I should say, a transparent life for him. And when we do live transparent lives for him, the world sees his glory in and through us because they see us and they glorify our Father in heaven. Declare to the world around you that you are his by letting him be clearly seen in all that you say and do and are. You, my friends, are at times the only face of God that others will ever see. They will never pick up a Bible. They will never come to church, but they see you. And you may indeed be the only God that they see. The face of God is in you. My friends, I, could sh I should say this to you. There was a time in America when most people knew who Jesus was. In America, most people who knew Jesus was, they at least had some idea about the Bible, the Ten Commandments. Mm, the vast majority of people went to church more or less. At least occasionally they would go. They lived, tried to live kind of moral, ethical lives. That day is long gone, my friends. That day is long gone, and that is not true today. And we are called to declare his glory to this great nation of ours. Let me tell you, yes, there are many in lands across this vast planet of ours that need to see the glory of the Lord. But let me tell you, this nation of ours needs Jesus like never before. And I encourage you to declare his glory to those in America now, we cannot go across this globe. Many of us cannot go and tell, but I can tell you others will go and others will tell the good news. And we must send them and we must support them and they will declare God's glory for us. But then finally, we are called to show his wonders. The psalm here tells us that he is a wonderful God that we serve. Amen? Amen. He is a wonderful counselor. He is the answer to the world's turmoil and chaos. He is the answer to the hurt and pain in this world. And you read that all through this psalm. He does wonderful things for his people. And even he does wonderful things for those who don't even know him. Isn't that amazing? Just like our God, isn't it? We are called to show, the psalm says, we're called to show his wonders and to point them out to those around us. His glory and his wonders are indeed all around us. Are they not? They're all around us. And many times we just overlook them. Well, you know, when, when was the last time I, you know, you just, I, I, I love springtime and I love all the beautiful flowering trees, you know, and, and all the beautiful spring flowers coming up. And Denise, you, uh, the other day you, you said, oh, uh, uh, Wednesday morning prayer. You said, look, look at that tulip. Look at that tulip. Look how beautiful that tulip is, you know. And that's exact. You know, when was the last time you just stopped to consider the wonders around you? You see, my friends, they're all around us. And these are meant to bring others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Look at the lilies, Jesus says. Look at the lilies of the fields, how they're arrayed in all their beauty. Solomon, who was the greatest king Israel ever knew, was not as beautiful as that little lily. Think about that. Think how you can tell them the good news just by showing them one of God's wonderful creations. Many times we fail to point them out because to those around us, but my friends, that is indeed what we are called to do. 
their wonders throughout this whole wide earth in every land and on every continent. Others will go for us to show his wonders for the lost peoples of planet earth, but we must support them in our prayers and our financial giving. We declare his glory to all the earth so that in the end, the whole earth will be full of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The more that we go and tell, let me tell you, the sooner we usher in his return. Because let me tell you, one day there's going to become a great end time harvest of souls like we have never seen before. A great outpouring of his Holy Spirit that is going to bring a vast majority of people into the kingdom. And then Jesus is going to come again. He's going to come again. We have an awesome task ahead. We can and we do make a difference. You think that your life doesn't make a difference? Your life makes a difference in somebody else. As I mentioned already several times today, we gave close to $10,000 in our faith promise for world evangelism. It did make a difference. Every one of those dollars you gave made a difference in someone coming to know Jesus Christ. We go... We can't all go, but we can send others to lands. And some of those lands are not safe. Take a look at that area right there back on the wall, that persecuted area. Many, many, many people are in that area. that They don't even know they are there. We can't mention their names. We can't mention the countries they are in. And they are at danger every day of their lives for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pray for missionaries and church leaders and workers in those areas of our nation, of, of our planet. People are being one to the Lord because you gave and because you pray. The good news of salvation is worth every dollar that we give, every testimony we share, and every prayer that we pray because every missionary can do something that you and I can't do. Let's be faithful this year again as we raise money for our World Evangelism Fund because I am fully convinced that as we give to missions around the world, God will be faithful to us in the mission field that we have right here at home. When you walk out these doors, your mission field starts right there. Your neighbor, your coworker, your family. When was the last time you shared with a family member the good news of Jesus Christ? When was the last time you said, Jesus loves you, he died for you, he wants, he wants you to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior? When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you just handed some scripture to someone or pointed out some glory, some wonder, and said, you know what, look how great our God is. When was the last time you shared with a coworker or someone at Walmart, don't you know that Walmart needs Jesus? I'm telling you guys, we got to do a better job than what we're doing. At one time, this church was full. It was full. We got to do a better job. We got to go out and tell and bring them in. Bring them in. Jesus, Judy, Judy said, are you singing Rescue the Perishing? Well, we're, well, I didn't have that plan today. She says, That's what and it is, it's a wonderful song, Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying. There are lost people out there. They're going to go to hell, an eternity without God, if we do not tell them Jesus loves them. At least give them the opportunity to receive Jesus. Because, my friends, we are all ministers and we are all missionaries. We all have a story to tell to the nations, and it starts right in our backyards. Don't wait for someone else. You go, you tell. Praise team. As we come and sing our final song, I want to encourage you, if you have filled out your card, and I'll give you a couple weeks if you're not prepared to do so today, I just want to encourage you as we sing the final song today, if you would just come and place it here on the altar, and if you don't want people to know your name, Turn it upside down, because I know people are funny. Here you go. What in the world? What's going on? Brother Daryl. Brother Daryl. <laughs> so I want to encourage you, just come as we sing this final song. 
put it down here. You can turn it over so people don't see your name or the amount. We're really, we're really not concerned about the name so much. It's, it's just a way so that at the end of the year, I just go to you and I hand it back to you and say, okay, this was your, this was your promise. And just maybe you forgot about it. Maybe you need to get caught up. I know Gina always says, oh, I need to make sure I get caught up. Well, that's right. Right, Gina? That's why I hand them out. So about this time next year, I hand them out to you again. That's why your name is on there. So that I can, it's a, just a reminder is all that it is. So we have a story to tell to the nations. And that starts right here in our backyard. Would you stand with me? And if you are prepared, I encourage you to come place it. If not, we'll give you a couple weeks to get them all in. song to be sung and everyone needs to hear it it needs to start with you and me as we go right into our backyard and we tell the story amen, amen. brother rich you have something you want to say i thought maybe you were wanting to say something amen, amen. <laughs> father we thank you and we praise you you are the god of all creation and our goal is that we tell the world the good news of Jesus Christ so that one day every nation on this planet will proclaim he reigns. Our God reigns. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We give you glory today, Jesus, and may we go forth in praise and victory and the good news to tell to the nations, and it starts right with our own families, our daughters, our sons, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, our husbands, our wives. It starts right there, and it goes forth from there. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Oh, VBS, VBS meeting is right now. I, right this minute. <laughs>